these ships are large passenger ships used mainly for vacationing. Unlike ocean liners, which are used for transport, they typically embark on round-trip voyages to various ports of call, where passengers may go on tours known as shore excursions, on cruises to nowhere, or nowhere voyages. Cruise ships make two to three night round trips without visiting any ports of call. Modern cruise ships tend to have less hull strength, speed, and agility compared to ocean liners. However, they have added amenities to cater to water tourists, with recent vessels being described as balcony laden floating condominiums. As of December 2018, there are 314 cruise ships operating worldwide with a combined capacity of 537,000 passengers. Cruising has become a major part of the tourism industry, with an estimated market of $29.4 billion per year, and over 19 million passengers carried worldwide annually as of 2011. The industry's rapid growth has seen nine or more newly built ships catering to a North American clientele added every year since 2001 as well as others servicing European clientele. As of 2021, the world's largest passenger ship is Royal Caribbean Symphony of the Seas. Italy, a traditional focus of the Grand Tour, offered an early cruise experience on the Francesco I, flying the flag of the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies. Built in 1831, the Francesco I sailed from Naples in early June 1833, preceded by an advertising campaign. Nobles, authorities, and royal princes from all over Europe boarded the cruise ship, which sailed in just over three months to Taumina, Catania, Syracuse, Malta, Kofu, Patras, Delphi, Zante, Athens, Smyrna and Constantinople, delighting passengers with excursions and guided tours, dancing, card tables on the deck and parties on board. However, it was restricted to the aristocracy of Europe and was not a commercial endeavor. P&O first introduced passenger cruising services in 1844, advertising sea tours to destinations such as Gibraltar, Malta and Athens, sailing from Southampton, the foreigner of modern cruise holidays. These voyages were the first of their kind. P&O Cruises is the world's oldest cruise line. The company later introduced round trips to destinations such as Alexandria and Constantinople. It underwent a period of rapid expansion in the latter half of the 19th century, commissioning larger and more luxurious ships to serve the steadily expanding market. Notable ships of the era include the SS Ravenna built in 1880, which became the first ship built with a total steel superstructure, and the SS Valletta built in 1889 which was the first ship to use electric lights. The crews of the German ship Augusta Victoria in the Mediterranean and the Near East from 22 January to the 22nd of March 1891, with 241 passengers, popularized cruises to a wider market. Christian Wilhelm Alleys published an illustrated account of it as Baxkish. The first vessel built exclusively for luxury cruising was Princess Anne Victoria Louise of Germany. Designed by Albert Ballon, general manager of the Hamburg America Line, the ship was completed in 1900. The practice of luxury cruising made steady inroads into the more established market for transatlantic crossing. In the competition for passengers, ocean liners, Titanic being the most famous example, added luxuries such as fine dining, luxury services, and staterooms with finer appointments. In the late 19th century, Albert Ballon, director of the Hamburg America Line, was the first to send his transatlantic ships out on long southern cruises during the worst of the North Atlantic winter seasons. Other companies followed suit. Some of them built specialized ships designed for easy transformation between summer crossing and winter cruising. In 1897, three luxury liners, all European owned, offered transportation between Europe and North America. In 1906 the number had increased to seven. The British Inman Line owned city of Paris. The Cunard Line had Campania and Lucania. The White Star Line owned Majestic and Teutonic. Le Lorraine and Le Savoie sailed for the French Compagnie Générale Transatlantique. With the advent of large passenger jet aircraft in the 1960s, 
Intercontinental travelers switched from ships to planes sending the ocean liner trade into a terminal decline. Certain characteristics of older ocean liners made them unsuitable for cruising duties, such as high fuel consumption, deep draft preventing them from entering shallow ports, and cabins designed to maximize passenger numbers rather than comfort. Ocean liner services aimed at passengers seized in 1986, with the notable exception of transatlantic crossing operated by the British shipping company. Cunard Line catering to a Nietzsche market of those who appreciated the several days at sea. In an attempt to shift the focus of the market from passenger travel to cruising with entertainment. Value. Cunard Line pioneered the luxury cruise transatlantic service on board the Queen Elizabeth.